Hello, my name is Laura and welcome to my channel Schön Erklärt. In today's video knitting tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the long tail cast on method for total beginners. So uh, the long tail cast on method is a very versatile technique that basically every knitter needs to know. Um, I actually learned this technique about 20 years ago in school and it's still the cast on technique that I use most often because it creates kind of an elastic beginning of your garment and is therefore really um, usable for many types of garments that you want to knit. So for example, if you want to um, knit a sweater and you start at the neckline, so you would knit the sweater um, top down, you want to have some kind of elasticity on your sweater, right? Otherwise you will not fit your head through the neckline. And uh, this cast on method is for example, perfect for this kind of things. But also if you start the sweater um, bottom up, you will have the same issue and also with many other garments that you will knit in your hopefully future knitting career. Um, so therefore it's really good that we start with this kind of cast on method. So in this particular video, uh, we will start by uh, looking at the materials that you need to do the long tail cast on method. Then we will go over to um, a slip knot, what's a slip knot and how to do a slip knot. And then we will start to actually cast on. So first of all, of course you need knitting needles. You can either choose to go with regular straight uh, knitting needles or alternatively you can also use um, circular knitting needles, whatever uh, you prefer to work with. Uh, there's really no difference. Use whatever you already have at hand. Don't make any big investments uh, to start with and to practice casting on. Additionally to that, of course you will also um, need some kind of scissors to cut your yarn and a measuring band. So how do you find out what knitting needle um, you need for the preferred yarn that you want to use? So each ball of yarn has a so-called ball band. It's this um, little piece of paper here. I'm having here a yarn from Knitting for Olive, Doubles of Merino, which I purchased. Um, I really like the color, so not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, but it's a bit um, kind of a fluffy, bigger yarn and hopefully um, with this style of yarn I can show you in a good way um, how to cast on. Anyway, so um, regarding ball bands, um, this is this piece of paper that you have on every ball of yarn and you can find different information on this ball of yarn. But what concerns us today is um, a little mark like this where you can see what kind of knitting needle is suggested. So as this is a European brand, um, they tell us the needle size in the metric system, so 4.5 uh, millimeters. So for the American viewers, this would mean a 4.5 millimeter needle is a, a number seven. So um, if I want to knit with this yarn, this means I have to take a four and a half millimeter needle. You can see here on the back of my knitting needles, it's also possible um, that it's written on the side of a knitting needle, for example, on my right here, here. So you can see this is a knitting needle of uh, Licke needles, it's called. It's a 4.5 millimeters or an US 7. To give you a bit a better impression how um, ball bands can look for other yarns, I brought two more examples with me today. So the first one is uh, from the Norwegian brand Sandnes Garden. Um, it's a really nice summer yarn, Tin Line, I have no idea if I pronounce it correctly. Nevertheless, um, they have a very neat overview on the um, ball bands, where you can see all the important information you need to know about this yarn and what interests us today particularly is the needle size. So here you can see that the needle size is number three. As this is a European brand, um, the three stands for three millimeters, which in US size would be a two and a half. Another example is, um, the, is a yarn from the brand Pickles, also a Norwegian brand. Uh, this yarn I actually purchased in Oslo and I by coincidence walked by this uh, small cute uh, Pickles flagship uh, store. It was a total coincidence and um, I was so happy to find it. Um, anyway, also here you can see a different style of um, 
ball band but again you have a really nice overview of all the things that you need to know and again what interests us today is um, the suggested needle size which in this case is a 4.5 to 6 millimeter needle size um, which would be in the US needle 7 to 10. Okay so um, we're gonna start now with the real work and for this you can take off the ball band of your wool and you want to find the beginning of your yarn when you start knitting and you use uh, the end starting from here every time you will uh, pull some more yarn the ball will do movements like this and especially um, if you either have cats or <laughs> you're knitting with more than one ball this can create a huge mess so whenever possible try to find the inside of this yarn Um, just take the yarn uh, that you have prepared and make some kind of a loop with the yarn like this So you can see the only thing that I actually did is um, to lay one part of the yarn Okay, that was the cat. So what you want to do is to put uh, one part of the yarn um, Above the other one so you can see this is the top yarn and then this yarn that's on top here you want to um, put below the circle so that you get like a little pretzel. Can you see the, the kind of pretzel resemblance? <laughs> so you're gonna pull this part that we just put underneath. You're gonna hold the short end, you see that, with your, with your finger. The other one you can also hold. And you're just gonna carefully pull, pull, pull until you have a knot. It's actually not that hard. I'm gonna show you again. So to make a slip knot, just put one part of the yarn above the other to make a little circle or little loop. And then put the short end, or the end, doesn't matter if it's a short end actually, but the end that's above the other yarn, you're gonna put it below, like this, to make a little pretzel. And you're gonna hold onto this part of the yarn while you hold the ends with your other hand and you're gonna pull and ta-da! A slip knot is done. You can try if you actually made a slip knot <laughs> if you were successful doing that by uh, pulling on the end of the yarn, the short end and see if you can actually increase or decrease your loop. If you can do that, you made a successful slip knot. Congratulations! So, um, you can see now that you have um, next to the slip knot two tails. So why is the first custom method that I'm going to show you called long tail method? Because you need a really long tail here. So this is not long enough for much, to be honest. So how do you determine um, how long this tail uh, should be? So there is a rule of thumb which says that per stitch you want to make, you should measure uh, about two centimeters or three quarters of an inch per stitch. This means if I want to make 10 stitches, um, I will need 20 centimeters of um, yarn here. And how much is that in inches? So um, what we're doing now is we're measuring how much or 20 centimeters of the yarn that we need. For this I have my measuring band here. Okay, so actually for 10 stitches it's not that much more than <laughs> we already had. But um, let's say we make 20 stitches, um, so that means we need double, so 40 centimeters of yarn. And then I always add a bit of a bit more um, just to have some reserve because the worst thing that can happen to you is to cast on like 90 stitches and then to realize you don't have enough yarn when you're at 88. Um, so um, please do the measures um, according to the many stitches that you want to make. 
We took now uh, 40 centimeters or 15 inches uh, for 20 stitches. So when you've done that, um, you can um, put your measuring band to the side and make a slip knot um, where your measuring ended. So again, I have here on this side, I have 40 centimeters and a bit more, maybe, I don't know, five, six, seven centimeters more. So that would be 15 inches and just add one or two inches to have, for sure have enough. And at this place, you want to make your slip knot. So again, the slip knot you will make by making the circle, putting one end below the existing circle and pull the pretzel. So when you have your slip knot um, made at the right spot to cast on 20 stitches with the long tail cast on method, um, you will take your knitting needle into the, your right hand and uh, keep the slip knot for now um, in your left hand. So what you will do is just slip on the slip knot onto your knitting needle, you can see that, and you can, by pulling on both ends, you can tighten the slip knot in order that it's um, tight on the needle, but not that tight that you cannot move it anymore. So I'm spreading my fingers apart. I kind of scoop up the yarn between my little finger and my ring finger. I can even squeeze it close a bit if that makes me feel more secure. Oh, this is the spark sign, okay. <laughs> then you can flip your hand so that you see your fingernails and you can um, wrap around the yarn around your pointy finger twice. Okay, so that is the first part. Then here we still have our tail, um, the yarn which is not connected to the yarn ball anymore. So the tail I will also clip between my little finger and my ring finger, like this, to create some tension, while with the thumb I will go below the yarn to create a kind of loop. Can you see that? So this kind of uh, pistol finger hand is what you want to have when you cast on for the long tail uh, cast on method. Okay. okay, so maybe you need to do this a couple of times. I'm gonna show it again and maybe you can um, do it along with me just to practice a bit. So we clip the yarn between the little finger and the ring finger. We flip the hand, we um, wrap the yarn twice around the pointy finger then we have the, the tail here, which we also clip between the little finger and the ring finger, hello, here, to create some tension. You will also feel it, like the mo more often you do this, you can feel that um, you have some control over the yarn. At the beginning, maybe it feels very loose and floppy, <laughs> but if you've done this a couple of times, you can actually feel the tension you can create here. And with the thumb, I'm going underneath to create my loop that I want to have. If you want to have more tension, you can also use the middle finger to pull the yarn a bit up. This is really totally up to you. Okay, so what now? We have um, our first stitch already on the needle. This is our slip knot. Um, and the slip knot really helps us um, to create the starting position, of course. So what you want to do is you want to dip down, go up, and go down. Okay, so this is the kind of movement that you will want to do while um, casting on with the long tail cast on method. So again, we're going um, to pick up the lower part of um, the yarn around the thumb. Can you see that? So this is on top. The lower part I'm picking up. I'm turning my hand slightly to pick up the uh, one part around my finger like this. So you can see I already have like a little loop on my needle and I'm pulling it back through the thumb loop and to actually create my cast on I need to tighten out the yarn with my thumb. Ta-da! And already we have three stitches on the needle. So I'm gonna do this a couple of more times quite slowly to show you but I can really just urge you to try 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 until you've got it and um, once you've got it you can do it in your dreams uh, trust me it's <laughs> Really, at the beginning, maybe it looks a bit complicated, but it's actually not that complicated at all. So again, you want to go below, 
on top and pull it through and tighten below on top pull it through and tighten below on top pull it through and tighten below on top and pull it through and tighten actually i just realized that my needle is not actually moving I mean, the needle kind of makes this movement, but actually I just realized my hand is doing the movement. So maybe you have to try what works better for you. If your needle is moving like this, or in the case I just saw myself, I mean, usually you don't watch yourself doing this that closely, right? Um, I realized I'm actually more moving my hand around my needle in kind of like a propeller movement, or I don't know how else to call this. Can you see that? stitches on your needle and you have the short tail which is still here but rather short and you have the part that is connected to your ball. So um, next step will be of course to start knitting um, which you will of course do with the long end of the yarn. This tail you can use to tighten a bit um, when you start knitting the first stitch um, and at the end when your garment is, is done you will just uh, sew it in like the other ends that you will create. Yeah, so that was actually it from the um, long tail cast on. So now that you've done the first cast on with the long tail cast on method ever, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you feel confident to continue knitting. Um, please subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button because uh, next week's video will be about how to knit stitch and to purl stitch. Thanks for watching and see you next week.